While the summer travel season is here, air travel has come roaring back after the pandemic, but it's not necessarily through the same airports people were flying before. The Regional Airline Association says smaller airports in the U.S. lost 34% of flight traffic compared to pre-COVID times, and it's happening here in Colorado, too, down in Pueblo. Pueblo Memorial Airport is busy on this Monday afternoon. However, none of these people are traveling today. They're all here to eat at Pete's in and out which is located inside the airport and apparently serves the best burger in town. Coming for Pete's? How good is it? What am I missing out on? It's best. Their burgers are good. Really? Lunchtime's always busy at Pete's. The rest of the airport is a different store. Pueblo, Colorado is an easy target. A down on its luck, once thriving steel mill town that's among the poorest in the state. So when news broke last year that its small airport was losing its only commercial carrier, well, the public response was a shrug. Oh, well, it's Pueblo. Well, we usually just drive to Colorado Springs or Denver and fly out of there. Well, I'm flying out of Colorado Springs. Pueblo was among 29 small airports recently dropped by United Airlines contractor SkyWest. Now, before that and before COVID infected the airline industry, SkyWest was flying 24 weekly round trips from Pueblo to Denver in 50 seat regional jets, which the airport says were 80% full on average. But over the past three years, the number of SkyWest flights dwindled to an unreliable trickle. Typically fly out of Springs or Denver. Do you ever fly out of Pueblo? Uh, usually the connections are so obscure, you get stuck in Denver sometimes overnight, and uh, it's not worth not worth it. How do I get to my destination? Right. Yeah, I go. I have to go to Denver, yeah. So... Uh, you don't fly out of Pueblo? Uh, I have in the past, but the um, there were concerns of when the plane left and when it would return. On January 14th, SkyWest flew its last flight out of PUB. Well, it's been a frustrating last few years. Greg Pedroza is director of aviation here at Pueblo Memorial Airport, but Pedroza isn't down about the state of his airport. He's downright bullish. So here in Pueblo, we are excited that we're starting with the new airline. The day after SkyWest flew its last flight out of Pueblo, commuter airline Southern Airways Express flew its first. I think for the longevity of our airport, this is a good first step. Southern Airways will fly 24 flights to Denver each week on nine passenger propeller planes. It's important that the community has that option and it has that option available for folks who want to make that decision to fly out of Pueblo and not have to deal with the I-25 traffic to Denver, risk getting a traffic accident that's going to delay you and have you miss your flight. Here's the rest of Pedroza's sales pitch. Southern Airways charges $49 for that 45 minute flight to Denver. The Pueblo airport has free parking. And this next point, especially if you ever fly out of DIA, is pretty good. The only planes now flying out of Pueblo carry nine passengers, so there can never be more than eight people in front of you in the TSA security line. Going in depth on why regional jets just aren't in the cards for small airports these days, jets are expensive to operate for labor and fuel. Jet fuel prices have tripled over the past three years. Regional jets hold an average of 79 passengers and use 30% more fuel per passenger than larger jets, which carry an average of 159 passengers. So flying bigger jets into bigger airports means bigger profits. Now, Southern Airways only started flying out of Pueblo in mid-January, so it's too early to tell if this small prop planes to Denver model will keep Pueblo afloat. Airline industry expert Steve Cow doesn't think it will. There's just too few people, and Colorado Springs is just too close. Do you think its days as a viable commercial airport are, are, are just about done? I think they're numbered. All right, so tomorrow we're going to take a look at why the shrinking commercial airline service to rural areas is not exactly disastrous to the flying public.